Hey guys, so if you're watching this video, um, you should be ready to go with a full rough draft. Um, and the way that this video is gonna work is as you watch the video, you're going to hear me sort of say something and then say, okay, press pause and go into your paper to look for this. Um, so it could be that you open it in two separate tabs and you pause the video and then go back to your paper. Or if you wanna just drag um, your paper, the tab that your paper's on into a new, um, browser, then you can have them side by side. But basically, you're gonna to listen to me talk, I'm gonna explain a rule to you, and then you're gonna go into your paper and take some time sort of fixing those errors because um, remember that if you are taking this class for college credit, a certain number of even grammatical errors can um, really bring your grade down. So you wanna really take the time to do this. Um, if you do it correctly, it probably will take you um, more than two class periods to do it, so please, set aside time to do it um, and make sure that you do a really good job because this is your chance to get really good at that editing um, portion and proofreading, which is um, gonna help you out as you move through this course. So to begin, um, you need to put a proper header onto your paper. So um, that should look like your name, instructor name, which is my name or Miss Martinez's name, um, the class, which is either freshman composition or English 11, and then the date. So here's an example from one of your classmates' papers um, before she put in her header at the top. Um, but this is what the header should look like. Obviously, where it says student name, you would put your own name. Um, and then it should have my name or my name and Miss Martinez's name, um, the course title, and then the date. And that is MLA format. So that should be um, how you write your papers uh, moving forward in any class that's um, asking you to use MLA. You'll notice that it's double spaced and it's in the exact same font um, size 12 as the rest of the papers. Okay, if you need to pause this now and go back and fix your header, do that. Um, otherwise, this is a pretty easy one. You need to write out numbers in an academic paper. So what that means is um, if you say I had 211 tickets, you write out the words 211, right? Not just put the numbers. Um, but what it also means is that if you had something that says like one of your classmates wrote this dislike I had of reading carried on to the Christmas of my ninth grade year, ninth, you can't write it like that. You need to actually write out the word ninth. So have fun writing out the word eighth and trying to spell that. <laughs> I always have trouble with it. Um, if you wrote about eighth grade in your um, paper, but that is how you do it. So you need to write out numbers. So take a minute and press pause right now and just go back and um, write out all the numbers, um, unless it's a thousand or over some huge number, then you can leave it um, as a numerical. Okay, this is one that everybody needs to do because it's prolific throughout your papers. So you can do a control F if it's easier for you, but you need to search for these three words, that, well, and so because what you guys are doing is you're starting sentences with well and so, that, and it doesn't need to be there. So for example, here's one of your classmates' papers. Um, I basically gave all my attention to my friends. Well, a lot of people that I thought were my friends. Um, that well doesn't need to be there. It doesn't tell your reader anything. So what the writer was trying to do was say like, well, actually, right? Um, or at least, so I did a revision and changed it to, I basically gave all of my attention to my friends. Then I used a dash, which is when you're going to add a clause to add some more information, or at least a lot of people, that should say who, who I thought were my friends at the time, right? So those words that I changed in orange are clarifying the sentence. The well didn't really do anything to help the writing. If anything, I think it brought it down a little bit. Here's another example from someone else's paper. So I decided it was time for me to take the next big step, right? That so didn't tell anything, but if you rewrite it, get rid of the so and think, what is that so saying? After realizing I had what I needed, I decided that it was time for me to take the next big step. So as you can see, that clarifies something to the reader. It's actually adding information to your writing, not just these like filler words. So press pause right now and go search for that's wells and so's and get them out of your paper unless they're actually adding to the meeting. Okay, once you're finished with that, you can start the video again and let's do a super quick review of how to write people's names. So many of you are putting the Mr. or Mrs. or Miss and then the last name without putting a space in between the period that is denoting that this is an abbreviation and the actual last name of the person. 
it needs to have that space. So check right up in your header on my name or Miss Martinez's name, make sure that it has that space in there. But then anytime you're talking about someone in a paper and you are putting their that formal address, Mr. Whoever, Mrs. Whoever, there has to be that space. So just take a minute, press pause right now and go back in your paper and make sure that you did that. Okay, this one is huge. Um, a lot of you have already seen this exact phrase written in the comments of your paper because um, you are switching tenses. Tenses are past, present, or future, right? To keep it simple, um, past tense is I went to the game, present tense, I am at the game, future, I will be going to the game, or I am go going to go to the game, right? So a lot of you are flipping back and forth between present tense and past tense. So this is a big one. Uh, I'll show some examples, but you, everybody needs to press pause when you, um, after you hear these examples and go into your paper and make sure that you um, are in the same tense the whole time. Because every time you have a verb that isn't in the right tense, that's a little sort of grammatical ding on your paper. So here's an example. As the student disregards what the teacher said due to not understanding, she goes straight to her seat. The teacher was able to find out what language the student speaks. So that was in that second sentence is past tense. But speaks, goes, disregards, all of those other verbs are in present tense. Okay, so it has to you have to make sure that all those verbs are either in all in present tense or all in past tense. Okay, so press pause right now and go through your paper and make sure, especially if this is your paper that I'm using the example for, <laughs> make sure that you um, have those tenses all the same on your verbs. Okay, this one is a little bit of a mouthful, but I know that Miss Hesse went over these with you guys, and um, we also, if you had me last year, talked about this a ton. So. Um, a comma comes before a coordinating conjunction. Remember, coordinating conjunction is just a fancy word for a fanboy. Fanboys are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. It's an acronym that stands for those words. If you're like, oh, God, I kind of remember what fanboys are, and I don't really remember, just Google it. There's like 100 videos that will review fanboys for you. Um, but if you're connecting two independent clauses, so two different subjects in a sentence, like, I went to the game and the weather was perfect, right? I is the subject for that first clause and the weather was the subject for the second clause. You have to put a comma and a lot of you guys are remembering that there needs to be a comma, but you're actually putting it after the word and, like after the fanboy. It comes before the fanboy, okay? So here's some examples from your, your classmates. It was as if I were sleeping beauty and the chaos of school brought me out of the depths of my sleep into a world I didn't know but would soon learn to live in. Like, awesome imagery and like the references, great, great metaphor, but both of these commas are not in the right place. They're, they were both, see them moving? They were both after the fanboy. It needs to be before the fanboy. Okay, so pause right now and make sure that you have those commas. Also, you have to have the comma there. It's not optional if that subject switches. Okay. I know that I love semicolons, and I'm pretty sure that Ms. Hesse loves semicolons, so you guys have probably all at some point learned that semicolons are really just periods that separate two connected full sentences. So you can't put a semicolon unless both sides of the semicolon have full sentences on them. Okay, so here's an example. I was lost and hurting, felt as if there was no light in the massive void in my soul. Beautiful language, okay, but that's an incorrect use of a semicolon because that second half of it, what comes after the semicolon, is not a full sentence, right? If you read that to yourself, felt as if there was no light in the massive void in my soul, you could pretty much see that there is a subject missing, right? It needs that I. You don't need to use a semicolon there. You can use a period, but a semicolon basically says, and here comes another sentence that is completely related to what I just said, and it's like a fancy sophisticated piece of punctuation. So they're great to use, but you just have to make sure that you're definitely doing it correctly. Okay, so take a minute and just hit pause and go through. And if you didn't use any semicolons, go find a place where you can put one in your paper. You just find two sentences that are 
really connected where the second sentence is maybe clarifying, right? Like this first sentence, I was lost and hurting. The second sentence is describing it, right? It's really clarifying for the reader exactly how the um, writer felt. Okay. I don't want to call people out right now, but you know who you are. <laughs> um, you can't put the word had in front of every verb in your paper. And there was not just one person doing this. There were many, many people doing this, right? I had gotten a new pair of, I don't know, whatever you got, sneakers, right? The had shouldn't be there. I got a new pair of sneakers is how it should read, right? This was because as soon as I had gotten home, I had put on my headset and turned on my Xbox. When I read that, it should sound a little bit weird, all those hads in there, right? So just get rid of the hads. Look, had gotten turns into got. Had put on turns into put on, right? This was because as soon as I got home, I put on my headset and turned on my Xbox. Also, there should definitely be a comma after the word home, so sorry for not catching that. All right. Go back and look for these. Just literally press um, Command F and that little like search button comes up and type in the word had and see, am I putting hads in front of my verbs? If you are, just lose them. But you, just, you, you can't leave, this one wouldn't have made sense if it said this was because as soon as I gotten home, right? So you just got to make sure that the verb is how it needs to be once you get rid of that word had. Okay. I don't know what to say except capitalize proper nouns here. Like, look up a video if you're like, I don't remember what proper nouns are, but they're basically naming specific person, places, or things, right? Um, you should know that the word Newberg needs to be capitalized. A person's name needs to be capitalized. The pronoun I needs to be capitalized. I know you guys don't do it when you text, but you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to do it in an academic paper, there is no way you will not lose points for having a lowercase i. There's no such thing as a lowercase i. It's not a word. The pronoun i has to be capitalized or it is not the pronoun i. Okay, so let's look at this one. After living in Brooklyn for two years and getting accustomed to it, I'd move to a whole different area called Newburgh. So there's a bunch. Right now when you look at this, you should be seeing that there are a couple things that need to change, right? After living in Brooklyn needs to be capitalized. That's a specific place. I just went over how anytime, and you can tell that in my voice, the, frust the frustration that I feel because you guys are still not using capitalized. Um, and Newburgh. Newburgh is a place, right? Specific places, specific people. If you're not sure about something, look it up. Use the internet as a reference. Okay, press pause. Go back. Make sure you have all of the things that need to be capitalized, capitalized. Just do command F and do a search and put a lowercase I because it kills me a little bit every single time I read your papers and there's lowercase I's. Okay. You're getting there. So if you've got to this point, like just maybe you need to take a break because you've been working for your paper out for a long amount of time and you want to come back to this tomorrow, which is totally fine. Um, but you're, you're getting there. So keep going when you're ready to. Okay, this one's a little bit tough to explain, especially not in person, but I'm going to try. Um, so, when you are listing two things, so like I went to the store and bought peas, right? Or bought apples. I went to the store and bought apples. You're listing things that you did. So if it's just two things in a list, there's not a comma. So you don't write, I went to the store, comma, and bought apples. Okay? So let's look at an example. Maybe it'll make it a little clearer. My mom had a conversation with the principal that someday and asked her to look at the security cameras. That same day, sorry. My mom had a conversation with the principal that same day and asked her to look at the security cameras. So your mom had a conversation with the principal that same day. That's one thing your mom did. And the second thing your mom did, the second thing in the list of things she did was asked her to look at the security cameras. So there's that comma that's there shouldn't be there. It's actually incorrect for it to be there, okay? So you need to make sure that when you're listing things like that, there's not a comma in there. Commas only come before fanboy 
if it separates two different independent clauses, okay, which asked her to look at the security cameras is not. that I put that arrow in there, but now you see exactly where I put the comma out. <laughs> okay, next one. Do not end a sentence with a preposition. Now, again, this is getting a little higher level. Prepositions, you can look them up on the internet what a preposition is. Um, when I was in high school, I was taught it's anything you can do to a cloud, which is actually not really a good way to think about it, except it kind of works for me. So this is why my teacher said that. Like, if you set a box, you can't be inside of a box. I mean, I guess you could be inside of a box, but you can't be through a box. Like a cloud, because you can, because it's made of vapor, you can imagine that something can move all around it in every single way. But before, after, um, with, in, um, through, those are all examples of prepositions. You, you just, it's a rule. You can't end a sentence with a preposition. It's antiquated in the way that we speak. We end things with prepositions all the time. Who are you going to go to the party with, right? With is a preposition. You really, way you're, the way you're supposed to say that is with whom are you going to go to the party, which we don't talk like that. We don't speak like that anymore, but you have to still write like that in an academic paper. So here is an example um, from one of your papers. She was also very keen on oral presentations, something which I struggled with. So with is a preposition. You can't end a sentence with a preposition. Again, you can look for a list of prepositions online um, if you're confused. And some of you, I corrected these in your papers, so you might have just seen my correction. But now, so this is this is what you um, why that correction is in there. Um, she was also very keen on oral presentations, something with which I struggled. So you actually have to take that with and move it further back into the sentence. Um, I'm going to do another lesson on this later, but I want to make sure that you guys um, sort of get a little introduction to this. So go through your paper and definitely try to find those prepositions and make sure you're not ending your sentences with them. Okay, next one. Put a comma after an introductory word. This is like couldn't be any easier, guys. If there's a word that is is introductory, right? We talk about introductory clauses, just an introductory word. However, finally, it just needs a comma. Finally, when we reach the house, I remember looking at the house and saying, this kid lives in a castle. Finally, comma, when we reach the house, I remember looking at the house and saying, this kid lives in a castle, right? So words like finally, however, sometimes although, depending on what the rest of the, um, sentences. So those introductory words need a comma. So just press pause, take a minute and look through your paper and make sure that you're getting all of those. Next, use a comma after an introductory phrase. So an introductory phrase or clause is when there's an entire group of words that are introducing a piece of information to your reader that come before the subject of the sentence. So when I was in eighth grade, I had Mrs. Gamma as a teacher. The subject of that sentence is I, right? The verb is had, I had. So when I was in eighth grade, that's one big introductory clause. There has to be a comma at the end of the introductory clause before the subject of the sentence. For example, from one of your papers, at this point, the whole class was looking in her direction. So if I'm a writer, I think, okay, the subject of the sentence is the whole class. The verbs of was looking, right? So at this point is giving your reader its little introduction to what's happening. Um, and that introduction needs to have a comma on it. So the next one is that you need to set off a positives with commas. So if you remember, a positives are um, when you're specifically naming something, right? So uh, the example from one of your papers, even the principal, Mr. Rothman, did not know what to do first. So Mr. Rothman is naming the principal. Those need to be set off with commas. That's what we say. Um, when something has a comma before it and afterwards. So just take a minute and look through your paper. And anytime that you have a, um, an appositive, you need to have commas before and after that appositive. Okay, we're almost done. There's like two more. So you need to set off adjective clauses with commas. So what that means is um, an adjective clause. Adjectives, remember, are words that describe someone. So um, my mother, being the caring person she is, told me to pick my head up and continue writing. So there needs to be a comma there. My mother, comma, being the careful, caring person she is, comma, told me to pick my head up and continue writing. So the reason why, one of the things, just so you guys know, that you like should be in your head, like, wait, I think I need to put a comma at the beginning and end of this, is because 
that tells you that this is a clause that can come out of this sentence. So I could say, my mother told me to pick my head up and continue writing, right? So that being the caring person she is, is a specific adjective clause that's added to the sentence. So it needs to be set off with commas. Okay, last one. I don't think there was a single person who wrote a paper where you didn't have a mistake with this, but listen, that's why we're here, right? That's why we're learning how to write in high school. Um, you could just gotta memorize this, punctuation inside quotation marks. Um, it's never not inside of there. So what I mean is at the end of your, it's always at the end that this happens because that's where you put the punctuation. Um, the punctuation needs to be inside the quotation mark. So whether it's a comma or a period or an exclamation point, it always goes on the inside of the quotation mark. So in this example from one of your papers, one of the organizers whose name was Philippe told me that this is all a breeze, but even he looked a little stressed out. So that comma needs to be on the inside of that um, punctuation marks there. See that? This is the right way, the orange way. Okay. That's it. You did it. You're, you're at the end. Um, please have someone proofread your paper. I know that I have done it, but you need to find somebody else now. So whether it's a classmate or someone at your household or your friend or an old teacher, have somebody else take a look at your paper. Um, it's a really good learning experience um, to have somebody help you out with that. Um, and then you're done. So uh, these papers are due on Wednesday and Wednesday we are going to be meeting, um, if you're on the Monday, Wednesday class, uh, we are gonna be meeting synchronously. So we will be meeting online um, together. So thank you for all the work you guys put into these papers. They're fantastic. Normally with um, literacy narratives, we go through and read them together um, and share them with one another. And I'm sorry that we're not gonna be able to do that. Um, but I really wanna encourage you, if you wrote a paper about someone, um, a lot of you wrote about a parent or a friend or a mentor, please share that paper with them. It is so nice as an adult to have a student write, especially as if it's a teacher you wrote about. So wonderful to read about students when they write about you like years later. Um, okay, so thanks so much and be in touch if you need me, you know where to find me, okay? Talk to you guys soon.